up, Shannon? Are you on mute? Is this class time or what? Is this a Zoom class? Good morning, <laughs> professors. All right, power forwards. Let's get after this. Jonah. Let's go, baby. I'm excited to make my draft picks. <laughs> I love early morning podcast radio show, dude. Let's do this. So 95, there's 95 power forwards. Jonah came out and admitted to me he only wants to talk about what 35, 37? Yeah, we can, talk, we can talk about like the first 37. That's what my first eight tiers are. And then tiers nine through eleven cover thirty-eight through ninety-five. But um we can just talk about a few players from those tiers without delving too deeply into right. any of them. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Would you hey, are you going to – no, wait, you've been starting off with the first tier anyway. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's always good to start off with the first tier. And in this case, there are two gentlemen in tier number one, <laughs> and they are Giannis Antetokounmpo and Anthony Davis. Yeah, I, I forgot about AD, bro. Yeah, no, they're – but Giannis is number one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of good. course. Yeah, he's my number one too, definitely. I and they're in the same tier, and because that, I think there is a case for Anthony Davis to be number one. I think last year in the playoffs, he was probably the best um, defensive player. I think he was like the he was yeah he was the perfect second option to have next to LeBron James. I think I think Anthony Davis is a more scalable player just because his shooting and um, maybe a touch more defensive versatility. I actually probably like Anthony Davis defending like small guards better than I like Giannis, but Giannis has just been the best regular season player in basketball for the past right. like, three years at this point. He, and he's basically, he'll, he's basically a, will guarantee you home, home court advantage in the playoffs. And I'm, I'm willing to give Giannis more chances to prove himself in the playoffs. I'm not ready to write him off as a great postseason player because like you really couldn't have asked for two tougher matchups than the Raptors and the Heat in the last two years. And so I, I think this um the story has yet to be written on Giannis Antetokounmpo in the post. Right. I mean the teams he lost to went to the finals and one of them beat the Warriors. So like Mm. Yeah, and they were all like perfectly equipped to defend him, and they both yeah. had two incredible coaches. And so, yeah, I think those were just unlucky circumstances for Giannis. Um, but yeah, he's number one on my list. I think there's a case for Anthony Davis. I've been kind of feeling the Bucks lately, dude. I'm not gonna lie, they look pretty good. Uh, I agree. I think it was kind of underrated because of all the huge trades at the deadline, but I really think PJ Tucker is actually such a big deal. Yeah. That's facts. Um, I've been feeling Philly over them all year, but I don't know anymore. Yeah. I think I would probably yeah, be taking Milwaukee in that series. I think I've, I've been a little bit more down on Philadelphia lately. I don't, I think, especially without Ben Simmons, I guess it's kind of hard to do yeah. complete judgment, but I don't think Ben Simmons is going to be like the fix for. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I have almost as many concerns about Embiid as like a postseason player as I do Giannis, but Embiid is so much better this year that it's hard to make too many conclusions, but he's mm. underwhelmed in years past. I feel like. Yeah, he has. Because I think teams can just kind of double team him and force him to make passes, and the Sixers don't have a ton of great shooting, and Embiid's not an incredible passer. So the they definitely have a much better roster, and Embiid's definitely much better. So they could definitely yeah. um, they could definitely have a deep postseason run. But I, I agree with Chan, and I really like the Bucks this year. I honestly think if I had to pick right now, the Bucks might be my pick to win the championship. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gotten a lot closer to me. I I had like kind of a clear idea for most of the season, but right now I really like I don't know. And against a healthy Nets team, I'm still probably taking Brooklyn, but I'm starting to get really concerned that we may yeah, not. Yeah, it's still weird. Those guys, it's especially really Harden. He was supposed to be the healthy one of those. And three. then you're right, and then now he's having like they said some setback. Like that's concerning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if if all three Brooklyn guys are ready to play like 35 to 40 minutes in a playoff series, then yeah, I think Brooklyn probably beats Milwaukee, but I'm skeptical. But anyway, 
Any more thoughts on Giannis or AD? I'm sure all of us have a two-person top tier. I wouldn't think anybody was – it's a pretty big gap. Um, and tier two, there's only one um, person in tier two and a pretty big buffer on either side of them. There's a pretty clear top two, then there's a very clear number three, and that's Zion Williamson. Mm. Nice. Yes. Good pick. Yeah, he's continually impressed me. I was – hating on him for a while but he is just we talked about this on the podcast before but he's just so good and so dominant and has such a special touch that it's just combined with his obvious athletic advantages it's ridiculous yeah yeah and i really like what they've been doing recently like letting him bring the ball up the court just putting yeah. putting it in his hands more often um he's really basically unguardable because he'll just blow by big men and he can just overpower anybody who's smaller than him. And if he misses, he just gets his own rebound and puts it back in. So he's yeah, difficult to guard. you'd think like, Oh, maybe y- you can back off and just let him shoot. But no, then you're just giving him like a head of steam to just accept. Yeah. yeah. For real. Uh, design with a full head of steam is a terrifying sight. Yeah. The defense is still very much a work in progress. Um, I that's like the thing that's holding him back obviously is that he's not a great help defender he definitely doesn't guard anybody one-on-one uh he can't really play small ball center because he doesn't protect the rim that much and so yeah he has he's just kind of doesn't have a particular role that he's suited for defensively right now but yeah the offense has been incredible I think it's kind of funny with Zion how um he's in my mind, he's improved so much this year without really addressing any of the concerns I had about him going into the season, except for health, I guess. <laughs> I still am just knocking on wood every time I watch him because that is something that I still worry about with Zion. But yeah, he's had a wonderful season. Um, it's a shame we probably won't get to see him in any sort of playing game or playoffs. Yeah. This, but maybe next year. Bro, I'm looking at this list. I don't know what to pick. <laughs> there's a few guys I already yeah. got my picks lined up baby really do you guys have anybody who you wouldn't include in tier two with Zion yeah. no I'm there's someone who I was worried you might include and I'm glad you did oh really tier three oh really I think <laughs> tier three is maybe where um we might have a little bit of disagreement I have two players and one of them is still a very young guy who I actually have a lot of hopes for But anyway, number four is Tobias Harris. But number Mm -hmm. five, I've actually got Michael Porter Jr. all the way up in tier three. That last he's been he's been legit, bro. He kept the Nuggets in the game last night with three balls. It was insane, dude. He's He's got a nice shot for being a big guy. Yeah, such a natural score. He just basically shoots over anybody. I think I think this stretch without Jamal Murray is really kind of gonna make or break Michael Porter Jr. because Obviously, he, like almost anybody, can have just a lot of success playing off of Jokic and making cuts and shooting wide open threes. But I think in the absence of Murray, and this has already started to be the case, MPJ is going to get a lot more chances to kind of create his own shot, which I think is definitely something he's capable of. But he's got a nice handle. He obviously has one of the best jump shots on this list. If, well, probably the second best as I'm looking down. I would, well, yeah, I would... I would honestly say maybe he has the second best shot out of anybody on this list. Um, he's Isn't very nice shot. He's very athletic. He gets, it's just such an aesthetically pleasing jump shot too. It just yeah. looks so good when he shoots it. Um, he crashes the glass. He gets a lot of rebounds, but he was such a high release and he's so tall. Yeah. So hard to guard. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, and the confidence too, he literally shoots it with guys in his yeah. jersey. Like I always remember some of the battles he and Kuzma had in the playoffs last year. Oh Yeah took turns shooting heavily yeah kuzma's the same way and just pull it yeah, yeah i think he, michael porter might be a little bit of a better <laughs> definitely <laughs> but yeah they both are very confident um young men um yeah i think the defense it's getting better i think especially as a help defender he comes over he gets a lot of blocks at the rim he's still yeah. not really guarding anyone one-on-one which isn't a huge deal because most of the time you can just put your power forward on the other team's power forward because I'm sure you can tell by looking at this list, but there aren't a lot of 
elite offensive power forwards. So usually you can just yeah. put your power forward on the opposition's weakest wing and um, have them play help defense, which Michael Porter, he's pretty good at that. He's getting better at knowing like when to be in position and all those things. He still can't guard in the perimeter or get through a screen, which um, is a bit of a concern. You still kind of worry about the health stuff with Michael Porter Jr. as well, just because he's had these back and knee issues that have ailed him in the past. But yeah, I think yeah. he's got a chance to honestly be one of the best offensive players in the league, which is why he's yeah. on this list. Yo, I have a question. Who else forgets the freaking Aaron Gordons on the Nuggets? Like, if the whole game's quiet, and then all of a sudden hit like a three ball or do something, and I'll be like, well, that's actually a pretty good player that I forgot even existed on this team. Like, I don't know. It's so weird, dude. Because... He was kind of he was kind of like highly touted to get it, like trade offers and stuff, right? And obviously he's like slam dunk champ, you know? Yeah, he was getting talked about a lot at the deadline this year. And I do think he's gonna help Denver. I think now that Murray is hurt, um, they probably regret that just because they kind of went all in on this year. And now obviously that's kind of um a lost cause. But yeah, that still, sucks. sucks. Yeah, he's still a good player. Um and then Tobias Harris is the other guy I had in this tier. I really like Tobias Harris. He's just me too. He's an efficient scorer from everywhere on the floor. Like he and I, that's like that's like a literal statement. Like he shoots above average from every spot on the floor, whether it's three or any mid range shot or at the basket. He's just a really good scorer. He can create an isolation, or he's a wonderful pick and roll player too. He can catch and shoot or shoot off the dribble. He's a wonderful crunch time player. Like he's probably Philadelphia's go-to player to get like a shot in the last minute of the game. Like even more than because yeah. you can't really enter the ball to Embiid in the post in the last um, minute of a game and expect Embiid not to get doubled. So Philadelphia really runs their late game offense through Tobias and he's hit some big shots from. So um, yeah, I bet to think he's a wonderful scorer. He plays fine defense and yeah, um, there aren't too many players like him. He, you can just put the ball in their hands and ask them to get an efficient basket and to buy. Yeah. Especially at his position. He wasn't an all-star, was he? No. Could have been Loki. Yeah. There are some all-stars who will appear on this list. Do any of you guys have anybody who you'd put up with Tobias Harris or Michael Porter Jr.? No, I was hoping Tobias was the next two. Draymond slipping. He's not very good. Snub. (laughs) And so in tier four, we have snub. We've got four players in tier four, and those are Robert Covington, Pascal Siakam, John Collins, and Julius Randle. Dude, respect, bro. That's a good tier. Bro, Wait, what, it, what is it? Robert Covington, Pascal Siakam, John Collins, and Julius Randle. You think Robert Covington is more valuable than a Draymond Green to the Warriors? Like, No, I don't think. Saying I don't he's think a better that. player. I, yeah, I think but, that Draymond Green is incredibly valuable for the Warriors because they have right. nobody who can pass the ball besides him. But I think Robert Covington is a much, much better player than Draymond. Yeah. Dude, yeah, that's Robert a- Covington has hidden skills. Like, like he has abilities that we don't see, bro. Like, when he did that step through, like, Euro last night and got fouled, yeah. do you remember that play, Jonah? Like, I was yeah. like, what? And then he, like, pulled a step back a couple of times a couple of plays later and it was like it almost fell and it was like a clean looking step back like whoa he chill. is he <laughs> is such a ridiculous player because you you know he gets a ton of steals yeah like you know he gets a ton of blocks like just he's never been on a team where the defense wasn't better when he was on the floor like this year the blazers defense is five points per 100 possession better when he's on the floor Last year when he played in Houston, the defense was 16 points per 100 possession or possessions better when he was on the floor. Like that is, that's incredible. Um, so I think everybody knows the defense at this point. Um, but really he's an like incredible shooter too. Like he shoots 39% yeah. from three and they're not just easy catch and shoots in the corner. Like he shoots above mm-hmm. the break threes. Some of them are really deep. Some of them are heavily contested. A like lot of them are heavily contested. Like, because, like, most of the time he's looking to get it to the other guys. And then, like, when it's a situation where he knows he needs to shoot it, he just shoots it. Yeah. And the reason he's in Tier 4, and I know Robert Covington, he's not a big name. Like, everybody thinks of him as a role player. But he is the perfect role player. He's the prototypical yeah. 3 and D wing. 
And the reason he's in tier four is when you look down this list, there's not a single player that's both better at defense and better at shooting than Robert Covington is. Yeah. And so many times three and D players, like that's literally the only thing they can do. Like if they put the ball on the floor, you're nervous. But Robert Covington can – he can actually take it to the rack in, the, like, a late shot clock situation. He'll go to the basket. I mean, we yeah. see him make cuts, and we saw him throw one down last night in the middle of the yeah. lane. Like, yeah, he does kind of have – I don't know if it's sneaky athleticism, but uh, I, I guess maybe a little bit. He doesn't it's just really... like you don't really expect that from the player he normally is, and so then it kind of catches you off guard. Yeah, he can kind of rise to the occasion when he has to, but he's also yeah. – um, yeah, it's – yeah, he's just he doesn't take anything off the table. Like he's no. not like there are players on this list who um like yeah, they're okay at driving to the basket, they're okay at scoring in the mid-range. Like Carmelo Anthony. Like Carmelo Anthony, he may be like equally skilled as Robert Covington offensively, but Robert Covington doesn't really take anything off the table. He can just kind of space the floor and play off the ball. He doesn't really need to create shots for himself. Like that's not something he wants to do so he just kind of fits so well with any variety of players he's so good at playing his role and playing to his strengths there might i'm just thinking about this now there might not be a team in the league that robert covington wouldn't start for yeah i agree you couldn't really say that about many players on this list but he just fits so well because of his skills yeah yeah plug and check how many teams has he been on four or five three four uh, I know he played for Philly, Minnesota, I think a lot Houston. Of it is just playing in Tampa Bay. I think. Abba, you were frozen, Jonah. What'd you say? Uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, I moved on to Pascal Siakam. Who, oh, yeah. Shoot. Okay. There he's fallen go. down this list for me, but I think yes, it's just been I'm a happy bad, to see that. I think it's been a bad situation for him this year too. So I wouldn't be surprised if he rose back up next year because he's. I think it's his defense has taken a big hit as well. He was an awesome defensive player of the year the Raptors won the championship, and now he's just kind of average at that. I end. think he might need a Kawhi next to him. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't think I don't think maybe. he's kind of that lead guy in the offense. The Raptors kind of tried that last year in the regular season, and to pretty good results last year. I mean, he made an All NBA team, but in the playoffs. Um, he was just having a really rough time, and that's kind of continued going into this year. But he still. We have seen him miss a lot of game winners. Wasn't there a stretch yeah. where he was missing like a ton? Yeah, against like low key easy yeah. looks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the shooting has really fallen off. He actually shot from three really well last season, but that hasn't continued into this year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think this has just been a pretty weird season for everybody on the Raptors. Obviously, the entire team has been a massive disappointment. But yeah, I think Pascal, he can rise back up on this list. He still is an incredible transition player. He still has good touch and good skills around the rim, like his Euro step, his ability to like make reverse layups. Um, yeah. The jump shooting, I think, may not be back to... 2019 20 levels but it'll probably improve next year off of this year so yeah i yeah. think he can rise he's still maybe once he's back in toronto playing in front of fans he'll be a little happier and try harder on defense um uh, yeah i think this yep. has just been a kind of weird year for everybody on the raptors but especially him but he has been a disappointment number eight john collins um yes sir he's just kind of uh he's kind of I have a hard time judging him because like, I think he's a really wonderful, well-rounded offensive player because he's a great screener and he's super athletic. So he makes a great like alley-oop finisher. So he's a great pick and roll man. And then he can also shoot 40% from deep. So you can do the pick and pop too. And so he's kind of the perfect sidekick for Trey Young in terms of just an offensive big man, but he can't really play center on defense. So that means you have to pair him with a guy like Clint Capella and then that kind of makes it harder for Julius Randle on offense because all of a sudden Capella is more of the role man and Collins can't really do stuff around the rim. So I just think Collins, he suffers from having like the perfect big man offense, but like needing to play next to a center on defense, which I think it makes it a struggle to build a lineup around John Collins, but he still has wonderful skills. Like his shooting is awesome. He's very athletic. He crashes the glass and gets rebounds. 
I think his perimeter defense has improved this year. Like he can guard power forwards pretty well, which that's a big deal for him. But um, yeah, I think his most effective offensive position is center and his best defensive position is power forward. And that's those kinds of players are just kind of hard in my opinion to. Yeah, I agree. My, my sister just dropped off her little wiener dog right now and i don't know if you can hear her, but she barks so can you hear that yeah she barks so loud so number nine we've got julius randall of the new york knicks dude okay julius randall for some reason i've been like for a lot of his like this like spike in his playing I've like kind of wanted to believe that it was kind of just like a fluke. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because he was, he was bad in years past. He was bad. Yeah. And like, but I watch him and he just plays like he's dominant. Like the shots he makes, it's like, what? Like yeah. those are like superstar shots. Like, especially in like clutch situations, I've watched a couple games and it's like, damn, like it surprises me. Yeah. He's definitely had I, I, it's really been like the efficiency from this year as well, because he's hitting like 40% from deep on a, a somewhat small sample size, but I do believe um, he's a lot better. And then it's really been the free throws as well for me. Like um, in the last three years, he was a 71, 73, 73% free throw shooter, but it's up to 80 this year, which I think that really kind of like makes me want to believe that the shooting's improved. Like, I don't yeah. think he's going to be a 40% three-point shooter into perpetuity. Like uh, next year, if you ask me, is he going to be a 35% three-point shooter or a 40% three-point shooter? I'm honestly probably taking 35%. Yeah. But I think he does other things on offense too. Like he can drive the ball. He's a pretty good passer. And then yeah. this year, I still don't think he's a great defensive player, but he's kind of proven he can – at least be a part of a really good defensive team. And granted, there's a lot of shooting luck involved in um, what the Knicks are doing this year. Well, um, Randall's on the court. They've had a wonderful defense, 108 points per 100 possessions, but they're also allowing 51% effective field goal percentage, which is maybe a little bit flukish. So I think his defense might be a little bit overstated just because he plays on such a good um, what has been such a good defensive unit, but I think it's important um, that we know he at least doesn't like tip over the apple cart because that's honestly not something that I knew before this season. I thought like he would be a liability on defense, which that's clearly not the case. Yeah. Uh. So that's the end of tier four. Do any of you guys have anybody who you would have included in this tier? No. Is Draymond coming up? Uh, yeah, he is coming up. So tier five was a bit of a weird tier for me. Like these are all guys who I kind of had trouble placing because for various reasons, either it's like health or the team they're on, mainly just those two things. Like these guys, <laughs> I could make a case for them being in tier four or tier six. And so I just kind of made them their own like separate tier. And I don't feel super good about any of these guys, but they're all kind of just like, I all, I all, they're, they're all super polarizing players. Like, I feel like these are all guys who people could have strong opinions on, but anyway, my tier five, and this is players 10 through 12, by the way, Jonathan Isaac, Davis Bertans and Jaron Jackson, Jr. Davis Bertans. It's three balls. That's for sure. He's, a, he's like a three-point robot sometimes when he gets locked in. Yeah, he's just had another um, like super ridiculous three-point shooting season. I'm pulling up the stats right now. Uh, he's a 41% three-point shooter on seven and a half attempts per game. Last year, he was a 42% three-point shooter on nine attempts per game. The year before that, 43% on four and a half attempts per game. He's... No, he's right up there with like the Joe Harris's and Duncan Robinson's for like the best, like non Steph shooters in the NBA. Yeah. Like, ridiculous. Um, for a 6'10 power forward. It is. I think I would take, um, Jaron Jackson Jr. over him personally, just because I like 
what he brings as a power forward, like his total game, a little bit more than Bertans, because I feel like the games I've watched of Bertans, I felt like it was sort of easy for him to kind of like, kind of like just like, um, like when he's kind of like to lose him in the game. Yeah. If he's not getting his shots, it's kind of easy to forget he's out there. Yeah. And Jaron Jackson Jr., he's probably a better all round player. He's not as good of a shooter. Obviously, yeah. shooting has been Jaron Jackson's best skill in the past, and he's not close to as good of a shooter as Bertans is. But he also has a bit of a post game. He blocks yeah. a lot of shots. I also think Jaron Jackson is a much bigger health risk than Davis Bertans. Yeah, is. that's true. Jackson's had these knee things that have plagued him throughout his career. That's I, a good I, point. Jack Jaron Jackson, though, he has the potential to be right up there with like Michael Porter Jr. or Tobias yeah. Harris. But he just hasn't reached that potential yet. He was drafted out of Michigan State as kind of a defensive guy, and that hasn't worked out at all, mainly because he's only played power forward. He still fouls quite a bit. Um, yeah. Although he does block a lot of shots. Um, but yeah, I I think Jaron Jackson, he definitely has the potential to rise up this list. And yeah, he's only played like what what's it been? Like three or four games since he's come back from injury. Maybe like two, honestly, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think he definitely has the potential to be a riser. I just yeah. don't have that confidence in him yet. Like Davis Bertans has kind of proved what he is over the last That's year. true, yeah. Davis Bertans, like that's such a valuable player. And I think other yeah. teams besides the Wizards, like I think he could be utilized so much better on different teams that wasn't like the Washington Wizards. And so. Yeah, I, that's that's a good point also. I think I'd probably have a different opinion on him on a, on a different team. Like, it, can you imagine Davis Bertans on the Grizzlies? Like, with the open looks they can create when, like, John Morant gets down here. Like, I feel like Davis Bertans on the Grizzlies, that would be... Yeah, that would be a good fit. Yeah, I just think... I think Davis Bertans shooting is just such a game-breaking skill for, yeah. like, a 6'10 power forward. And he's a bad defensive player, but he's not super yeah. damaging. Like, he's been on good defenses in the past. So, I think you can kind of let it slide because I think that's kind of an uh, being a good defender is an unfair um, standard to hold Bertans to as well, because if he was like a good defender with his insane shooting, like he'd be in tier two with Zion Williamson. And so like having yeah. a below average defense is the reason he's down here in tier five, but yeah, I like Bertans. Number 10 is Jonathan Isaac who um, like besides Antetokounmpo and Anthony Davis, Isaac's probably the player on this tier who, could win a defensive player of the year award, just yeah. like that length and athleticism. Like he's seven foot tall with a seven, three wingspan and he's crazy athletic. Um, his, yeah, his defense is just all world. The offense hasn't really been there at all. Like he can get to the hoop and transition kind of like a Giannis light with like less skill, less athleticism, less power, like basically worse at everything, but just kind of, a similar concept just he gets to the rim and he's like so long that you can't really stop him but yeah yeah but he can't stay on the court like even before he missed this entire season he still hadn't played half the possible games of his career and now he's four seasons in he just can't stay on the court so it's hard to have him too much higher than this but yeah that, that's been a kind of a common thread just young guys where we're kind of worried about their health but i think yeah sucks I, I like Isaac's potential. So hopefully we get to see him at full strength sometime in the near future. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody that you guys would have had up in this tier? I don't think so. Let's hear your next tier. All right. So tier six is 13 through 18. And then this tier I have Jay Crowder, Larry Nance Jr., Grant Williams, Draymond Green, Jeremy Grant, and PJ Tucker. Hmm. I think I don't think Grant Williams is quite wait, do you have Grant Williams ranked ahead, Draymond Green? Well, they're in the same tier. So I, I could see I could see Draymond ahead of Grant. I personally Because like I, that. I mean like Grant Williams, he doesn't like do anything really. Well, I mean that's kind of the point, honestly. I mean Draymond gets rebounds and gets assists. Bro, you gotta you gotta consider who Draymond's playing with, bro. Should, should we Steph? You guys wanna hear my what kid? do you what? <laughs> Like, you guys want to hear the take about Draymond? Because I knew this was going to come up. And so, yeah, let's do it. So, I think like Draymond, he's been having a good season. I think the Warriors would be totally screwed without Draymond. And so, 
Um, like he's obviously been a hugely important player to them. I do think he benefits from just the utter and complete lack of passing on the Warriors. Like he, he really has to play with the ball in his hands to be successful on offense because he can't do anything else. And so he really has been a beneficiary of just no passing on the Warriors. Uh, he's been benefited from Steve Kerr's offensive system, which values players, values smart players who can pass and dribble, which are all things that describe Draymond. So that's been a huge help to him. And then also he's really been lucky enough to play with the best off ball player of all time. So he's been in a very special set of circumstances, but on most teams, most teams, they have like ball handlers who are good enough that Draymond doesn't get to play on the ball. So Dude, that's what I've been saying since Draymond was like an all-star bro. Like you put him on a, a different team. It's so situational, which I mean, not that I'm not trying to take away from him necessarily, but like, He's yeah. not an all-star player by himself. You know what I mean? Well, who else is going to guard Jokic? Back, who else is going to guard Julius Randle, bro? Maybe back Dude, when there's his, lots of players. I think his defense is the main reason he was an all-star, which I think that's fair because like Rudy Gobert, yeah, an all-star. But um, no, that's that's not my point, Janet. It's like Draymond can get boards. He can he can score at times too, and he no, also no, Callan Draymond can't score. Yes, he, yeah, he can't, okay. bro. He can't. I'm a better I, offensive I have player faith. Than when he has a wide open three ball, like although it's bro, a he's shooting 25, it can't, it can't sink. I, I mean, like, yeah, I know that, he's but shooting like 25 percent, he can sometimes. All right, like, ironically, he actually shoots worse on the wide open ones. He's shooting 24 percent on threes where there's no defender within six feet, which is the majority of his attempts. Dang, that's really, really bad. Yeah. But like, I mean, that's really dude, bad. He he brings so much value to the Warriors. We're trash when he's not. Yeah, he brings a ton of value to the Warriors. The Warriors would be nowhere without Draymond this year. But then, but then how can teams, you have him in the same tier as Grant Williams? On teams because like, the Warriors have no good players except for him and Steph, bro. So what? of course he's going to bring a lot of value. And think about it like this: I'll say he's this on the crazy. Mavericks with Luka. Say he's on the Mavericks with Luca, or say he's on the Lakers with LeBron, or the Bucks with Giannis, or the. Blazers with Damian Lillard. Say he's on one of these teams with, or the Nets with Harden. Like, say he's on any good team with a great ball handler at a different position. Like, teams are just not going to guard Draymond Green. And at that point, he's just going to be a complete liability because teams are going to play four on five. Like, at least with Zion, you have to guard him because if you let Zion catch it in space, he's taking it straight to the basket and getting an easy shot at the rim. Draymond is a horrible finisher at the rim this year. He shoots like 50% on shots within three feet of the basket. Bro, he'll throw it down. (laughs) He can. He can. You just have to watch some games, man. Like, And the worst part about it, too, is... We've watched games. The worst part about it is you can point to, like, specific points in the season. whether, Whether it's picking... Whether it's getting two technicals and getting ejected against New York whether it's getting a charge in the final seconds on Dame Lillard, whether it's shooting a half court shot with nine seconds to go (laughs) against the Spurs, whether it's picking up two technicals in the closing seconds against Charlotte, like you can point (laughs) to so many games where Draymond's cost the Warriors wins. And like, I think you can forgive those antics when the Warriors are boat racing everybody on the way to the um, like first or second seed. But when you're fighting tooth and nail, for a playing spot in every game is the, of the utmost importance. And you're pulling shit like that on a regular basis. Like it's just unacceptable. Honestly. That's a good point. And he's a terrible, like it's he just. He hasn't done that recently. La, la, and <laughs> you heard him say it earlier this year. Like he's not motivated by the playing game. Last year when the Warriors sucked, he basically just packed it in and stopped playing for the second half of the season. And I've said this time and time again, so much of, so much of my rankings are determined by how well a player would fit in a variety of circumstances. How well mm-hmm. do you think Draymond would play on the Sacramento Kings? He'd play for like the first five games. He'd decide that they weren't making the playoffs and he'd just phone it in for the rest of the season. And like how, and so he can't play on the bad teams because he just doesn't give a shit. He can't play on the good teams because they all have like playmakers who are so much better than him that Draymond wouldn't get guarded and he'd just clog up the works. And so the Warriors are really just kind of the only set of circumstances where he could be successful. And like, I have him at 16. He's still one of the best defensive players on this list. Obviously his years as like a defensive player of the year are over, but um, 
he can still guard almost anybody in the NBA. He's still a great, like switchable defender. Like he's, yeah, he's one of the best defenders in the NBA, but there are just so many things, like whether it's the offense, whether it's the attitude issues, there are just so many things that are damaging about Draymond as a player that I have a hard time putting him higher than tier yeah. six. My favorite thing about Draymond is his IQ, because like you said, he's a really, he knows the game like yeah, really well, really like as well player. as anybody in the league. The problem is like, he doesn't necessarily have the physical skill to complement that, but I think he could be a good coach or like a, an entertaining analyst. Yeah. Kellen, do you want to make the case for Draymond ahead of this? Cause I know, I know you probably think he should be hired. Do you have any response to what I said? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's just when he's on the court, bro. I mean, it's not like he's it's I mean, like Andrew Wiggins is a good score, but sometimes passing to Jordan Poole, sometimes he's passing to Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Lee, Michael Mulder. These aren't freaking world beaters. And I don't know. Like I mean, he has the best off ball shooter, the best off ball player of all time. Like I don't I yeah, don't think we but, should be like lamenting. Yeah, but I don't think it's fair yeah. to you to, for you to say that the Warriors are really bad at passing. Like we have really good sequences where like Steph constant. Like it's not. I don't know. Like it's not just like Draymond passing it to Steph all the time. Well, but the thing is, like, like it that, might be Draymond giving it to Steph, but it's like there was a sequence of passes that got the ball to Draymond, and Draymond fed it no, to Steph. Uh, but that's kind that of the. Happens- the- that was sorry, Chan, but I was no, you're good. Like, that's kind of besides the point. Like, I it, like I don't really care like how good the rest of the Warriors passing is. All that I care is like Draymond's allowed to play on the ball because he is. He's a huge part of their offense. He spends a lot of time with the ball in his hands at like the elbow or the top of the key. Like, do you think if he played for Dallas, they'd be taking the ball out of Lucas' hands and just running all their offense through Draymond? Or do you think if he played for Portland, like Draymond would be like the main no, but as you. Truth be told, I, like I don't care about any of those teams. That so doesn't matter as long as Draymond's doing what he does on the Warriors, and he's doing it. He's doing what he does on the Warriors at a high level. So I mean, like you can't really knock a dude for being like one of the best players on his team. Like that's well, the, the, that's the, the, the that's like that's what he's given, and he's making the best well, out of it. Callan, I I would argue Jeremy Grant is the best player on his team, and he's in this tier as well. So like that, there you can certainly be one of the best players on your team and be in this tier. I don't know, dude. I did, yeah. But the Warriors. Also, I think like I think like it's a like mm-hmm. you mentioned like the Warriors like have good ball movement and stuff, but I think it's important to recognize that that's like what Steve Kerr has taught like his entire time as a coach, and also like I don't think you would see that ball movement without Steph and Draymond on the floor. Like other like the other players, it doesn't really matter who you put in. If you make it to the NBA, you're capable of swinging the ball around. If you have Steph and Draymond, like that's and Steve Kerr's your coach, like there's going to be ball movement. Like that doesn't necessarily mean they're like above average passers by any means. Yeah, but Draymond's the one making the facilitation better. Yeah, he's yeah. an incredible so, passer. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't should know. Should we talk about the Draymond's stat? Yeah. So I came up with this little stat to represent um, the incredible season Draymond Green has been having. And the five guys who make this list are Draymond Green at 42.55 Draymonds, Dwight <laughs> Howard at 29.57, DeAndre Jordan at 28.71, Thanasa Santetokounmpo at 28.66, and TJ McConnell at 27.03. So I'll give anybody who can guess what the stat is twenty dollars i don't know what it is um i'll i'll give you a hint the the final calculation of the stat was multiplied by 100 so instead of 42.55 you should think of it as 0.4255 a draymond it confuses me that tj mcconnell's in there just tell me is it like, is it like, wait, can I, where's the stat? It's on, it's right here. Draymond. Is, is it, um, is it like, did you do something funny with like, I don't know, dude. Uh, maybe, 
Hmm. Is it like a bad thing for every few good <laughs> things or something? Uh, <laughs> it's turnovers divided by shooting possessions. <laughs> and so basically what this encapsulates is just how hesitant Draymond is to shoot the ball. Like for every shot he yeah. attempts, um, he gets half a turnover. And so I think that basically encapsulates like not only can he not shoot, he just doesn't shoot. And I think yeah. that's even more of a liability because Jay yes. Crowder, Jay Crowder, he's not the best three point shooter in the world. Like, but he he's pulling it, but he's pulling if he's it. open. He's letting it fly. And he forces teams to guard him out there because yeah. like he can get hot at times. And so I, hon- I honestly think Draymond would be well served by like shooting five threes a game, even though, even though he's terrible at it, I think, like if he catches the ball at the top of the key and they're not guarding him, I think he should just like shoot it. Honestly, I agree, dude. Because if, right now, if you're in the paint and he catches the ball, you're not moving, and then you Callen, can just think about other stuff. You can think about okay, where's this pass going? Do yeah. you agree with that, Colin? Do you think that Draymond w- might be um, better off if he took a few threes per game? Of course, because he's got more opportunity to sink him. Like I have the faith that he can do. So okay, wait. Whenever, <laughs> whenever Draymond hits a couple threes in a game, which he'll do every uh, like time to from time to time, I'm always just say to myself, it's gonna be a good day because whenever Draymond hits three balls, I'm like, the other team's he, in for it, dude. He hit a huge three against the Blazers in that game earlier. He this. did. Yeah, remember that one three, dude. I'll never forget that. What 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 team was that against when he? tried to get fouled and get to the line the spurs when he hit yeah. the half, when, he <laughs> hey, the when we were up the like we were up like 25 points in that game too and they came back yeah see. yeah he is inclined to make it's crazy because he's he's that like is. a smart player but he makes so many like boneheaded mistakes at the end well, of the game. his brain doesn't the best his brain has, doesn't match his body yeah he has yeah. great set. iq because his body like his he he has to have a good basketball IQ or else he wouldn't yeah. have anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is All right, so I guess we might as well talk about some of the other players in this yeah. tier. At 13, I had Jay Crowder, who um I I honestly think he's like kind of uh I think of him in a similar way to Robert Covington. Yeah. Like I think Robert Covington is the perfect three and D help defender, and Jay Crowder is the perfect three and D on ball defender. Yeah. You can match Jay Crowder up against Kawhi Leonard or like LeBron James or even Giannis. We saw it last year. Like yeah. obviously with Giannis, you have to send a double team, but Jay Crowder was the primary defender against Giannis and he did a good job. But I just think that's of less importance because like 26 of the 30 teams in the NBA don't have an elite like one-on-one defender where Crowder's really making all that much of a difference. Cause for every game that he's guarding like Kawhi, there are like, even more games where he's matched up against like Thaddeus Young or Aaron Gordon or like Kyle Anderson. And so like the, that skill set, even though his skill set is as good as Robert Covington's off ball skill set is, it just doesn't come into play very often. And he's not the shooter that Covington is either, but I think Crowder is a hugely valuable player. I'm, I'm, can you imagine if the Blazers got, Jay Crowder in free agency because he signed for the same amount Derek did. Can you imagine if we had Crowder and Covington? That That's what we wanted, bro. Yeah, but I know we talked about Crowder all the time. That was unfortunate, but yeah, I think he's an awesome player. Um, that would be crazy. And uh, the next player I have, Larry Nance Jr. Bro, imagine in the playoffs, Jay Crowder's on ball on whoever, Kawhi, PG, yeah. whoever, and Robert Covington is freaking creeping around waiting for him to make a mistake. Yeah, that's deadly. The thing that really gets me about that too is, um, this is a complete tangent, but that article about Derek Jones Jr. Derek said that um, Neil Olshay told him they offered the mid level to a few guys, and the first one who responded back, they'd give it to. And Derek ended up being the first one who responded. And I think that was a bit of a poor move by Olshay, if that is true. And obviously, we don't know if it's true because it was Derek Jones who said it, but if that's the case, like obviously the young player who has never signed for more than like $1 million is going to be the first to respond because like he doesn't have as much financial security. So he'll want to lock down the money while it's available. Whereas like a veteran who's made a ton of money, like Jay Crowder can wait and see what his options are. So I think if that's true, Olshay maybe mismanaged that free agency a little bit, assuming Crowder was one of the players who 
well, she offered, which I can't imagine him not being. But anyway, that's irrelevant. That's all in the past. I think Jay Crowder is an awesome player. That's why he's number 13 on the list. Um, Larry Nance Jr. Do any of you guys have any Larry Nance Jr. takes? He's what solid. Is- I was happy you put him as high as he did. I didn't know where he put him. But yeah. yeah I really I like, like him game. as well. He's a great one-on-one defender. He gets a ton of steals. Last year in Cleveland, he played center quite a bit, which hasn't happened so much this year just because – Cleveland is brimming with fives, but he can really guard anybody like three through five. Yeah, gets yeah. a lot of steals, jumps into passing lanes. He's a good offensive player too now that he's actually he is. making threes from time to time, and he's a smart passer. He just kind of keeps the ball moving, doesn't really take anything off the table. So, yeah, I like Larry Nance. Now, honestly, my favorite player on this list. Can we talk about number 15, Grant Williams? Yes. I think Grant... We talked about Robin Lopez last week. I think Grant Williams might be one of the most underrated players in the NBA as well. His really? defense is just so exceptional. Like I've been like hooked on Grant Williams ever since like midway through last season when they had that ABC game against the Lakers. But he's oh, yeah. just so strong. Like he honestly, he's like PJ Tucker. Like the strongest centers in the NBA can't score on him in the post just because of his upper body strength. Um, he. You, you know, we um, like we talk about not taking anything off the table on offense, like Grant Williams, he certainly doesn't bring a huge skill set, but he can make corner threes. And that's really all that's really all you have to do, honestly. Like, he yeah, can, he can make corner threes that this season he's shooting 45 percent on corner threes. I think that's probably a little bit over his head, but I think he can certainly like knock down at least 36 percent on corner threes. And that's. And when you combine that with his defense, like I think the flash bulb memory that stands out to me is game seven against the Raptors when he just absolutely stonewalled Fred Van Vliet on the last possession of the game and forced Van Vliet to shoot the air ball. Like, yeah, dude, that air ball was funny. Grant Williams, he can guard, he literally can guard all five positions. He's like a prime PJ Tucker type of player. And he, yeah, he shoots the ball really um, competently as well on offense i wish brad stevens would play him more because yeah i think yeah and the those units where they put him at center he and that's the thing with his defensive versatility is that you can really play him as a small ball five and those units where they went small in the playoffs last year and had grant williams out there with like tatum brown kimball walker and marcus smart like those were the celtics best lineups and so Yeah. yeah i think grant williams he's a hugely valuable player i just wish he got more playing time but yeah, I think he's super, super good. I agree. That's good. So number 16 was Draymond, who we've talked about. Number 17 is Jeremy Grant of the Detroit Pistons. Uh, yeah, I honestly think Jeremy Grant, I know he really wanted to kind of have his own team and be like the star. I think he's probably a little bit better suited for just kind of what he was doing in Denver, where he just... Oh, definitely, without a doubt can play good defense and be a capable shooter. Uh, I do. He, I think the best part of his game is just his athleticism. I think he's a really good finisher around the basket. Uh, he's been taking a lot of pull-up jumpers this year, and that hasn't really been so effective. But, yeah, he's just an athletic wing who can de- defend and shoot confidently and finish around the basket. Um, the reason I have him stay ahead of Aaron Gordon, because I think Aaron Gordon – is having a better season for the Nuggets than Jeremy Grant had last year for the Nuggets is because like, I feel like Gordon had every opportunity to do what Jeremy Grant is doing in Detroit. Like Aaron Gordon could have done that in Orlando. Like they really wanted him to kind of be the main focus of the team. And he just could never put together a season like Grant's having like Grant's averaging 23 points per game. I think the highest Gordon ever got to was nine, 19 points per game. And, Grant's been much more efficient than Gordon was in any of his seasons. And I do think Grant is a better shooter and Grant gets to the basket more. So I think Grant's just a all around better offensive player. Um, I always wished with Grant's like athleticism and length that he was a better like help defender, like maybe block a few shots, jump in some passing lanes, but that's not really his game. He's more of a one-on-one type of guy, but yeah, I think he's still a solid player, probably a little bit miscast as like, the number one option in Detroit. I think he'd be a better like third or fourth option on a really good team, but that's not what, that's not what he wants. So more credit to him, I guess. And then number 18 is PJ Tucker, who I'm not ready to give up on him. I know he's 
pretty old at this point, but he's getting old, man. But when you base your game on like strength instead of like athleticism, like you can yeah. play longer. Yeah. And he certainly has no athleticism. Like there is, um, there was a play um, last th- their game against the Suns. That was the last Bucks game I watched. It was like on Wednesday or Thursday. I forget which one, but they threw him the ball under the basket and he went for the reverse layup and he just didn't get off the ground at all. And it just got completely swallowed <laughs> by, I think it was like Dario Saric. And so I, his That's athleticism right. is really starting to wane, but he still can make corner threes. He's still, um, he still has like good mobility. Like he's not athletic, but he can move around the floor pretty quick. And so, yeah, yeah. I think he's still, he's, he's going to be a huge key for the bucks because last yeah. year we were able to pick Milwaukee apart be, because Brooke Lopez wouldn't get out on the perimeter. And so all those handoffs were just wide open. So Tyler hero or Goron Dragic or Duncan Robinson could get a ton of space to either shoot or drive in and take a mid range floater. Yeah. And they were just going Milwaukee this, that way. If PJ Tucker is the player he was in Houston, none of that will be possible because they can no. play PJ Tucker as the five. And I think, and I that's why honestly PJ Tucker is the X factor that could swing this year's playoffs, in my opinion. Because if he's playing well and Milwaukee, all of a sudden has that defensive versatility. Recall the main concerns we had about Milwaukee last year were a a lack of like a true point guard who could run pick and roll if Giannis ever like wasn't able to get it going in half court. And I think Drew Holiday has been a big addition for them because he can do that. And the lack of defensive versatility because they didn't really have many looks besides the Brooke Lopez at center. And I think they've addressed both of those issues. And if PJ Tucker is playing well, I think Milwaukee could win the championship this season. Yeah. And that's another example of a player who doesn't have offensive skill, but they have a corner three, so it doesn't really matter. And another player of a, like, like a Jake, well, actually, Jay Crowder wouldn't really fit that because Jay Crowder sometimes bombs away maybe a little bit too much. But like P.J. Tucker, <laughs> Larry Nance, Grant Williams, Robert Covington, none of them take anything off the table because yeah. they're they're all so super low usage players. Like they they don't take very many shots. They don't turn the ball over like you don't really hear from them much on offense, but they are there when you need them. They kind of, yeah, they stay in their lane and they can do one thing pretty well, which is really all you need when you're talking about the best defensive players in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want. You don't really want them to be out there trying all this stuff, honestly. Exactly. I completely agree. Um, Tier seven was eight players and they are Jay Sean Tate, Maxi Kleba, Aaron Gordon, Thaddeus Young, Marcus Morris, Harrison Barnes, Danilo Gallinari, and Boyan Bogdanovich. There's some good players in that tier. I'd like to see Harrison Barnes on another good team. Yeah, I agree. Because I actually like his game. I wish he's a tough gotten, player. I wish the Celtics would have gone after him instead of Evan Fournier, even though I can't blame them with the deal they got on Fournier. But yeah. Yeah, I think Harrison Barnes, he's a very solid player. He's a great corner shooter. He has a little bit of isolation game. Like if he catches the ball at the end of the shot clock, he can definitely get himself something off the dribble. Definitely, yeah. I think that's valuable. He's not like a defensive stopper, but he's like far from a liability. He's just pretty good on that end. So yeah, he's a solid player. Danilo Gallinari and Boyan Bogdanovich, I have lower um, than I think most people would have. I just... Like I just kind of have a hard time with just kind of an athletic slower power forwards. Um, yeah, you can't really. No, actually, I like I like where you have him. Actually, I think Boyan he's been the perfect player for the Jazz this year, just because um, he can pass, dribble, and shoot. So he keeps the ball moving and can hit an open shot, and so he's like the perfect guy for their defense. But yeah, I think if he wasn't playing next to literally the best rim protector in the entire NBA his defensive limitations would be a little bit more important. And same goes for Danilo Gallinari. Like ironically, Danilo Gallinari and Boyan Bogdanovich, two of the best offensive power forwards in the NBA are also playing next to the two best rim protectors in the NBA probably. And so (laughs) they both kind of really benefit from that in my opinion. Although Gallinari last year, he was really good on the thunder. So I'm, and he was, Steven Adams probably isn't in that same tier as Gobert or Capella. And so maybe that's a bit unfair to Gallinari. But Gallinari, he also has the injury concerns. He's not getting to the foul line as much as he used to. 
Um, Marcus Morris. I really like Marcus Morris, actually. Uh, which one? Who does he play for? Which one is the Clippers? But okay. which one is he? <laughs> he's a 48 percent three point shooter on like six attempts per game, and so he just. Yeah, I know he's been good. He's yeah. been good, and he has a bit of a mid. He he's good at like posting smaller guys up too. Um, he is. He's, he's not so much of that like doesn't take anything off the table mode mold because he will yeah. like try to get to his isolation shots from time to time, but he's pretty efficient. So I think you're okay with that for the most part. I think he's dropped off quite a bit on defense from like his Boston days, for example, but he's still yeah. like a big, strong physical guy. So he doesn't really have like a target on his back, so to speak. So yeah, I think he's a pretty good power forward. Yeah. Number 19. Oh, sorry, Chan. Did you have something about No, that? keep going. I think people might be surprised that Jay Sean Tate is this high, but I, I think this is more like a pick. With oh, a, that's the, that's a rookie, right? Yeah. From Houston. Yeah. I yeah. Think this is more of a pick with like the future in mind. Cause honestly he has the, he has like the tools to be the best, like defensive power forward in the NBA. Like the yeah. way he can like slide his feet and stay in front of like Damian Lillard or Kyrie Irving, like, He's just – he defends with his – That's chest. rare, bro. That's rare at that position. Yeah. And I don't think he's a terrible offensive player. Like, he's he can't shoot, but he he makes smart cuts. He really crashes the glass. Like, he averages, like, seven or eight points a game, which is more than you'd expect just because he, like, gets easy shots at the rim. And so – Yeah. I think even though he's – do for mm-hmm. Jay Sean Tate like that's that's why he's not in the tier with like Grant Williams for example I think the lack of shooting it does kind of take stuff off the table yeah wait you're frozen oh Did sorry you say I was, something yeah I was just Did thinking you... I I think the lack of shooting could be a big deal for him because like yeah. I think the spacing is valuable like that's why I think Grant Williams is still a tier ahead of Jay Sean Tate but the defensive tools are very intriguing to say the least. What is his shot? Is his shot promising at all or not really? Like just as a rookie, you know, like it can get better, but I would say it still looks pretty weird. He's definitely got a bit of a hitch in it. I think his shooting percentages, like it's definitely not a good looking shot, but I think he does hit it maybe like 28% of the time, 24% of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a 28% three point shooter. And so like, yeah, that's not terrible. Like that's, that's better. Like when you look at the list, like that's better than Draymond Green. That's better than Jonathan Isaac. Um, better than, I'm pretty sure that's better than Siakam this year. Definitely probably better than Giannis at that stage in Giannis's career. And yeah. so like, there's definitely like, you can see Jay Sean Tate improving, but I think the offense is maybe just a little too limited right now. And just a small sample size. Like he's played one season on the worst team in the NBA. And so it's hard to to make too much of a judgment on him based on that. Like Grant Williams, he's had his defense like tested in the highest stakes scenarios in the NBA, like deep into the playoffs. We just haven't had that test yet for Jay Sean Tate. And so that's why he's a little bit lower, but I don't know. I think compared to like maybe other like NBA, well, not other NBA analysts, but like, NBA uh, yeah other NBA analysts I think I may be a little bit more like if I see a player who's like who like Jay Sean Tate like I think I'm a little bit more apt to just believe it right off the bat because I, I don't know I can kind of see like the tools he has and like I can see his game and see how he defends the best players in the NBA and like I'm pretty sure like he'll be able to do that in the playoffs so I'm not too concerned about that but I do think there is merit to the idea that we have seen Grant Williams like do it at the highest levels and we haven't really seen it from Tate yet True. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Number 20, Maxi Kleba, a wonderful shooter, pretty good positional defender. He guarded Kawhi Leonard to mixed results last year in their playoff series. <laughs> I think his defense has probably taken a step back this year, but his shooting has been quite a bit better. And so I think he's just a very solid power forward. 21, Aaron Gordon. Um, like this is another player who's just in a perfect situation right now. Cause he has Jokic to set up and basically spoon feed him easy offense. And I think his defense may have fallen off a little bit. Like that game they played against the Clippers a couple weeks ago, Kawhi was able to score pretty well against AG, but I do think Aaron Gordon, he's still got like good size and he's a pretty quick. Yeah, definitely has the tools, bro. 
Yeah, so I, I think he's an above average defender at the very least. Yeah, that's fair. 22 is Thaddeus Young, who's been a great player on the Bulls this year. I just worry um, another player who might not have the best shooting in the world, and um, he really succeeds on offense by passing the ball. So he's a great yeah. player at like the short role. Like he's been playing backup center for them, and they've been running pick and roll, get the ball to Thaddeus Young, and he always makes the right play. Um, which is very valuable. And he's a good defender too, like both the one-on-one and help defender at the rim. So I think he's more of a, maybe a niche player than other players on this list. Like Aaron Gordon, you could plug him into almost any starting lineup and he'd be a solid, a solid wing. Thaddeus Young, I think he's a little bit more limited in the circumstances where he can be effective, but there's not yeah. really any arguing with the results he's had in Chicago this season. Like he's been awesome. And so, Yeah. He has been. Should we start running through the next year a little faster? And if there are guys you want to talk about, we can stop. Sure. So, sure. so tier eight is from 27 to 37. And the guys in this tier are Cameron Johnson, Kyle Anderson, Otto Porter Jr., Kenrich Williams, George Niang, Juan Toscano Anderson, Sadiq Bay, Dorian Finney Smith, PJ Washington, Brandon Clark, and Chuma Okiki. Dude, P.J. Washington torched the Blazers, bro. Yeah, he's got a great shot for a big yeah. guy. Especially above the break, too. Like, it's one thing to be able to make it, like, in the corners, but he can really shoot it from any spot on the arc. Yeah, surprised me. I didn't know he was like that. Oh, your AirPods are so fucked right now. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't know. What happened? Is this not weird? Yeah, just a little bit. Kellen, do you want to talk about Juan Toscano Anderson? Because I think people might yeah. be surprised to see him this high on the list, but he's, yeah. all, he's had a really I, good season. Yeah, his defense is insane. And I mean, I don't know. Like I've said a hundred thousand times, it, his whole entire just aura is contagious. And I feel like everybody catches on with it because we just have similar players with similar kind of mindsets on our team. But he has capability to hit three balls, pretty good passing and athletic enough to throw it, throw it down. Like he last night, he tried to, um, poster Nicola, but he hit the freaking ball off the side of the backboard. He cocked it back and then he hit it off the side of the backboard. It was so funny, but he gets up. Uh, yeah, I I think if he played more often and kind of kept the results level, like I think if he could do what he does in like 15 minutes a game, but did it in like 25 minutes a game or 28 minutes a game, yeah. he legitimately has, he could move up to like the Draymond Green, PJ Tucker, Jeremy Grant here. Like, I really believe in Juan Toscano Anderson, but it's just such a limited sample size for him right now. Yeah. And he's, yeah, he's hitting his prime. He's 28. So, you know, maybe that's not. true too. I guess, yeah, that's a good point. We always, th- I, at least I think of him as like this young prospect, but no, this is like really who he is too. So, yeah. I like that Cam Johnson dude too. Yeah, I think Cam Johnson, he's a wonderful, wonderful player. I really wish the Blazers would have been able to get him in that 2019 draft, but Phoenix, they took him pretty high and say that just was never going to happen, but really good positional size. He's a great shooter as well. A uh, really good touch around the basket. Like he's got a very nice floater, which I yeah. appreciate because like then that adds like a counter. Then if teams like close, close out and run you off the line, then you can kind of attack the close out mm-hmm. and get to the floater. I think that's just a very nice dimension to his game. And I think he's like six eight, six nine, somewhere in that range. So really nice size, and he he's a great defender. And so, yeah, I think his game is just a little bit like limited just by the lack of athleticism. I think will kind of prevent him from moving too much further off up this list. But like as their third wing, because they start Mikhail Bridges and Jay Crowder, and then have Cam Johnson coming off the bench. Like can't really ask for a much better like forward coming off your bench. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah, for sure. I just remember that one game with the Suns. He played really well. Against yeah. The yeah. Yeah. He's a great player. Shannon, did anybody in this tier stick out to you? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who my I'm trying to figure out who my third pick is gonna be. Bro, see, I've been struggling so hard. <laughs> That's what I've been so, looking at this whole time is Jonah's um PDF he sent me. I'm like, who the hell is gonna be my third pick? Because I've had my first two picks since you sent it, but I can't figure out what I want. Third. I, 
I'm only going to be picking two this time because you guys only picked two centers and I picked three centers and Zach Collins. He can kind of play the five or the four. So Oh, that's really, true. That's true. I only need two power forwards since I'm only going to be picking two. But I, I I think this time we should go around and do it as like a, a draft because I feel bad. Okay, I was, yeah. I have first dibs all the time. Okay, fair. That's a good idea. All right, tier tier nine. Um, it also, it's pretty unlikely that we have the same guys in mind out of all these players. And so, yeah. So, so tier nine, I'll just read through like, this is 38 through 59. I won't read all the guys, but I'll read some of the more interesting players. Patrick Williams is number 38, the rookie for Chicago. Uh, Blake Griffin at 39. I've got Paul Millsap at 40. Kyle Kuzma at 41. Uh, Kevin Love is 43. Laurie Markinen, 44. Yuta Watanabe, 45. Uh, Kelly Olenix at 47. The rookie Zeke Naji at 49. Uh, Rui Hachimura at 53. Eric Paschal at 54. Um, Denny Avdia at 58. Jaden McDaniels, 59. Yep. Got some old heads in there. The beginning. Yeah, it's a nice mix of older players and really young players. Yeah. I like that. Kellen, do you want to talk about Eric Pascal? Because I really feel like we haven't heard too much from him lately. Yeah. He's, he's kind he's of fallen a hip out of stinger, Right? I How think long he, has that been going on? Um, I'm not sure, but I know, yeah, he's been out with a hip uh, for a while now. So, I, mean, I don't know. But once he, get, once he gets back, it's going to be um, kind of nice because he – I know you don't like it, but he can play the five sometimes. Steve Kerr seems to like to do that. Well, I think the five, that's probably his best position offensively because he's uh, he sets good screens and he's pretty good at going to the basket. And yeah, he, he can plays shoot volleyball it down low. But yeah, yeah, especially just, against smaller guys. There's just really nothing he can do on defense like at all. He's like he too slow. He's lost, honestly, at times. Yeah. Because... I mean, I don't know. Yeah, he's just because he's not really the longest dude in the world. No, definitely not. And he's not particularly athletic, so he can't really play center and challenge mm-hmm. guys at the rim. So there's just really nothing for him to do on yeah. defense, which is why he's this low. And the shot selection, honestly, it's kind of yeah. Suspect. I hate how he settles for those mid rangers. I'm like, bro, yeah. they think sometimes it's just like there's got to be something else cooking there instead of just sprinting down the floor. Uh, honestly, a guy in this year who I think could rise, maybe not this year, but in a couple years is I, do you guys think like, I know we, this has been a trend this year with like veteran, well, not this year, like this has always been the case, but like veteran players like Blake Griffin or Andre Drummond getting bought out and joining like championship teams or LaMarcus Aldridge. Do you know who I think if he were to go down that road in a couple years, who I think would surprise a lot of people with how much he still has left to give? Oh. Kevin Kevin Love. Dude, definitely. Super sleeper, bro. He's just kind of like falling into the cracks in like a struggling Cleveland team, but I think he's still really valuable. He's always been such a great rebounder, and his – dude, my favorite part about his game has always been the passing ability, like on a rebound, the, what the, do you outlet, call the outlet, outlet pass. pass. Yeah, yeah, bro. Just so dirty. Yeah. And that doesn't go away when you get old. Like he's still yeah. valuable, and obviously he can – he's been a decent shooter like in his yeah. career, like – I completely I think, agree. Yeah, he and he's a, his shooting has only gotten better. Like the last couple of years, he's been 40%. And the passing, it definitely translates to the offense as well. He sets good screens. But obviously, the defense and the injury risks are just huge concerns for Kevin Love right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Completely agree, though. Like, maybe, like, I don't know about this. Because actually, Markeith Morris, he's not a terrible defender. But if... If you replaced Markeith Morris with Kevin Love on the championship Lakers last year, like, do you think that would be, like, do you guys think that would work? Like, would they still have won? No, well, I think they still would have won. But, like, do you think that would have been an upgrade for them, Kevin Love over oh, Markeith I see. Morris? Dude, yes. Honestly, I actually really value, like, experience when it comes to, like, you're building a championship team. And, like, if you're, like – lining a guy up to play with LeBron who's won a championship with LeBron. I think that's going to have value in itself. But aside from that, even um, I think his outlet passing would actually be great on the Lakers. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, because the Lakers, they do like to run in transition quite a bit. Like, even LeBron yeah. likes to hit 80 with those full-court passes. And, you know, like, Kevin Love, he stopped Stephen Curry in that game seven. And so maybe he's not such a bad defender after all. Nice. No, just kidding. He's not a good defender. But yeah, <laughs> I, 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 still think, I still think we'll hear from Kevin Love at some point. I don't think his career is over. I'd love for him to come back home to Portland. I think that would Me be Me too, bro. Me too. That'd be sick. Especially now that LaMarcus isn't going to happen. Yeah. He wants to, too. Like he's been yeah. pretty open about that. So yeah. Tier 10. Um, he really definitely kind of seems sp- like such an Oregon guy, bro. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. like, his Instagram and stuff, but no, he just seems like a really nice down to earth guy. I think yeah. tier 10, we're kind of starting to get a little bit to guys who maybe you don't want to play at this point, but uh, 62, we've got Carmelo Anthony. 63, we've got Rudy Gay. Uh, 65, Kevin Knox. Uh, 68, Simi Ojale. 69 is Mo Harkless. 72 is the rookie Precious Achua. 73, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. 77, Alfred Camino. Uh, 78, Marvin Bagley, the third. I have him all the way down here. Um, Damn even though he was at one point number two overall selected over Luka Doncic, but damn. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not too much to say about these guys. I think Carmelo Anthony, like, I think he's more skilled than a lot of the guys ahead of him, but it's just so hard with Melo because there'll be points like where the Blazers offense is humming and the ball's looking so good. And then Carmelo comes in and it's just, goes into utter stagnation because then, he his- has he really has brought us back into games like yeah, several times good. like he he can score in a flurry he, he can brought get us hot. yeah didn't he bring us back into the new orleans game when we came back yeah and he brought us back into that philadelphia game that was a big one yeah. um but there are just as many games where he comes in and he just completely shoots us out of it like yeah That's and facts. yeah he hasn't like we talk about, I, I know I've banged this cliche into the ground, but the guys who like take stuff off the table, Melo takes pretty much everything off the table. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's facts. Yeah, because like you could have a team of like LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and like Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and Melo's still going to be like taking contested mid rangers whenever he gets facts. the ball. And so, uh, facts. so yeah, he doesn't really, he doesn't really like play well in the sandbox compared to some of these other players. Yeah. So, that's why he's all the way down here. And I think he has his moments on defense. Like he's got pretty good hands. Like if he's, he's so good at like stopping those layups in transition when he can. Yeah. He's got great hands. Yeah, definitely. But so often he's just kind of out of position, like especially in the Blazers drop coverage where the forwards really need to be on alert because they can help and like slide in and make rotations at the rim and mellow. He's pretty bad at that. And so, yeah, that's fine. I still, I still think he's an NBA player. Like he deserves to be in the league, but yeah, I don't think he deserves the a rotation spot on a playoff team the way he has with the Blazers. All right, moving on to tier eleven. This is the very last tier. Um, Anthony Tolliver is in this tier. Uh, Alexei Pokasevsky, uh, Jared Dudley, T.J. Leaf, Winyan Gabriel, Alan Smolagic. Uh, <laughs> Seiku Dumboya, Jordan Bell. <laughs> Alan. What a boy. It's funny. Most of the players who had played as few minutes as Alan Smalagic, I didn't even rank them because I didn't really feel like I like knew their game well enough to have a strong feeling about them. But like I've just because we've talked about him so much, I've pretty much watched every minute of Alan Smalagic's in Well, yeah, it's about there. 60 seconds of action. No, he's played more than that. I'm just that. kidding. He's, he played a lot last year. Yeah. I was devastated to find out Anthony Tolliver was back on an NBA roster. He's on the 76ers right now, right? Yeah. 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 Disappointing. He, funnily enough, he was actually solid for the Grizzlies last year when they just picked him up off the street. He, The Blazers got the worst luck because Kent Bazemore and Anthony Tolliver just both completely sucked. Oh, and then man. they found at least more success than they had with the Blazers with other teams. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, we're going to fuck anyone up in a seven game series dude i'm so pumped for the playoffs anybody well, that comes in the warriors is screwed let's go 
the Blazers and Warriors are probably going to match up. Oh, yeah. In the playing game, I think. Yeah. And I, I cannot wait, like Shannon. Eat your word, son. Five game series. Nope. 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 Dude, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just having a tough time believing that the Blazers are just going to get by the Warriors. Like, there's no the playing I, The I playing tournament it. isn't a seven game series, is it? No. no those are one and done. Oh, okay. it, you think we might play in the um, play in tournament? Yeah. yeah. Oh, baby. I mean, the Blazers, the Blazers have a much better record than the Warriors. The Blazers won two of the three games with the Warriors, but the, with the with the, I think the Warriors, if they were to play I today, I'm honestly. S- didn't we split it? No, the Blazers won two. Won two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If they were to play today, I'm honestly taking Golden State probably. The Blazers are bad right now, bro. Yeah. Uh, what i'm saying dude the nuggets aren't even that good what nuggets are screwed without jamal yeah they're done yeah i am not, i'm not a believer in the nuggets i still think we probably should have won that game robert covington um i think that that game i was talking with my dad about it that game was designed in a lab to like piss me off because i spend so much time talking about how Jokic <laughs> is a terrible defensive player and then we lose the game because robert covington's like too scared to take a layup against Jokic. but um how's how's your dad Oh, he's doing well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Draft time. All right. Are you guys do you okay? I guess we better do some big picture stuff about the list. Okay, okay, okay. Who do you who you guys think are some big potential risers? I guess we better start off with some guys who have risen a lot this year. I think Zion obviously has risen quite a bit up the list. Yes. Julius Randle. Yeah, Julius Randle, that's a good one. Michael Porter Jr., he's yeah. um rocketed up the list. Grant Williams, I probably I I bet he's he's risen up the list quite a bit. I was pretty high on him at this point last year, but I think he's continued to kind of rise. Um, finally, or this is kind of funny, but Jeremy Grant, he hasn't really risen too much. I probably would have had him around 17 last year, and that's where I yeah. have him. Even though I think he's impressed like some people with what he's done in Detroit, I just kind of think of him as like the same player. Like I think he'd be better off like where he was in Denver but he's equally as valuable I think like yeah. sounds like yeah that's a good point yeah Jay Sean Tate obviously because he's a rookie he's um, risen quite a bit uh Cameron Johnson a little bit I liked him quite a bit last year though um Juan Toscano Anderson obviously is a big one Jay T hey he got thrown out the other day right yesterday who did? I think he got thrown out yesterday of the game. Respect. Uh, if it was so, Draymond, though, you guys would... Do you guys have any big fallers on the list? Hmm? Um, I feel like Harrison is low. Harrison Barnes? Yeah, I love Harrison. Yeah, I mean... I mean, that, that I mean like be. rightfully so probably, but I mean he's just he's a really good player. He's only twenty years old too. Yeah. Uh he doesn't and he doesn't really have any big weaknesses in his game. He just doesn't really bring like too much to the table, I don't think. Like he can space the floor and hit threes pretty well. He can need. defend okay. That's all you but, need. Yeah. I don't know. He's just kind of uninspiring for me a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a good player off the bench on a good yeah, team. This, Especially because he's played for the Kings too. Like I think if he was doing exactly what he's doing for the Kings, but doing it for like the Lakers or like the Celtics, then I think I could be a little bit more high on him. But yeah, just being a really solid role player on Sacramento. I mean, I think, and I think he would be good on a better team, but it's just hard for me to get too excited about him, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard to avoid just saying old people. For the fallers, you know? Yeah, I think because that doesn't really Siakam. count. Siakam. Has oh, yeah, Siakam. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Siakam. Um, that's the biggest one. I think Draymond, um, honestly, he hasn't really risen or fallen, in my opinion. Yeah, his game hasn't really changed. His situation just has changed. Because obviously, the last year he was atrocious, but I didn't really. I, oh, I was. Guy, come on. <laughs> Omari Spellman. <laughs> like we barely had any good players on our team. Well, sure, but I mean, we, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think anybody would argue that Draymond had a good season last year. No, yeah, I know, but he didn't have a lot to work with. 
Okay. Nobody sure. really would have been good on that team. Okay, but sure, but I mean, even given the circumstances, like the first he's... team in basketball last year. <laughs> well, but I mean, if you have a player who has offensive skill, like then they're gonna be like Jeremy Grant would have been better on that team. Like he would have made more happen. Probably. Like we're, we're just saying that Draymond has to have good players around him. So like saying that he didn't have good players, like that's not really an argument for Draymond. Yeah. Yeah, plus I still would have won. Nobody would have won games as a singular player on that team. Maybe you had a you had better numbers, but you wouldn't have a better. I wasn't even like trying to like relitigate the whole thing. I was just saying like he had a bad season last year. I don't think anybody was saying like Draymond had a good season. No, and I was just following up that nobody would have been good on that team anyway. I was just saying that I wasn't trying to get mad, but then I see Draymond's a touchy subject on all gear no game. (laughs) But how does that make sense though? How can no one have a good season on that team? The team was bad, but that does. If you put a good player on the, that team, they're they're gonna have a good season. Maybe the team won't. Let's just let's get to the draft, bro. <laughs> <laughs> let's get to the draft, man. All right. So some. So let's see if there are any other fallers. Um, Danilo Gallinari. Honestly, he hasn't even been. Uh, well, he's been quite a bit worse than he was last year. I just think yeah. like that. Yeah, he just does so much less. Like last year, last year, even if he wasn't finishing at the basket, he was at least driving to the rim and getting fouled. Now he's basically pretty much limited to a spot of three point shooter. So I think Gallinari has fallen a little bit this year. But um, Brandon Clark, honestly, as a young player, um, he this is like his second year, but he's been very disappointing considering how much I liked his game his rookie year. Mm-hmm. So he's fallen quite a bit. Um, Paul Nelsap. Yeah. Well, Kyle Kuzma honestly has fallen, and Larry Markinen as well. Both of them are kind of young. Oh, facts. Yeah, Markinen. Yeah, he had some hype for a little bit a few years ago. Yeah, and Kuzma, he's. I think he's had a fine season. Like his defense has been much improved. I know people talk about that quite a bit, but he still like hasn't cut out any of the bad stuff he does on offense. Like just take like difficult mid range shots. Yeah. No. Yeah. His game has never been sustainable, really, because it just it all depends on the ball going in or not. Like, he doesn't have aspects to his game that are, like, not going to change. Like, guys like Damian Lillard and Joel Embiid who get to the line so efficiently and stuff like that or can get to the rim so efficiently. Like, when you're shooting tough shots, they're not always going to go in. And, like, he suffers from, like, the Carmelo Anthony problem as well because I know a lot of Blazer fans say, like, how good Carmelo Anthony would be if he just, like, limited himself to taking three-point shots at the wing because he's, like, really efficient at that shot. And that's he gets those shots quite a bit because Damon CJ draw so much attention, but he insists on doing so much other stuff instead. Like Kyle Kuzma, if he limited himself to just like either cutting to the basket, which he's good at, um, catching the ball and driving to the basket, which he's pretty good at, or just taking catch and shoot threes, which he's not that great at, but it's still a fine shot. Then he'd be a solid offensive player, but he just insists on doing so much that it's kind of hard to (laughs) appreciate it. All right. So those, that's it for the risers and followers looking ahead to next year. Um, some big movers could be like, I think Siakam could move back up. I honestly think Julius Randle could move down more likely. I agree. I think Jonathan Isaac in either direction is very likely. Like either he just never comes back or he comes back and is awesome. I think both of those scenarios are um, equally likely. Jaron Jackson Jr. I'd expect him to move up quite a bit. So um, he can stay on the court. That's it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And kind of tap into some of the potential he has. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Grant, I could see him moving down the list to be more like a Cameron Johnson or Aaron Gordon. Yeah. Um, Danilo Gallinari, he could continue to fall. Yeah. Juan Toscano Anderson, I could see him moving up this list quite a bit. As with Otto Porter Jr., I think if he gets a better situation – yeah, that's kind of it for the risers and fallers. Maybe Yuta Watanabe, honestly. I've been kind of impressed with what he's done in Toronto. Yeah. All right, so I think we better get to the much-anticipated final portion of this podcast, which is the draft. Yep. So, Callan, do you want to lead us off? All right. Oh, should we? Let's say the players on our teams first before we get into this. Okay, okay. okay. I got Booker. Dort, 
Grayson Allen, Brooke Lopez, Claxton. All right. So far, the two guys in my starting lineup are Gary Trent Jr. and Jakob Pertl. And coming off the bench, I've got Tyler Hero, Robin Lopez, Pat Connaughton, and then I took a flyer on Zach Collins. He's kind of the end of the bench guy if he ever gets healthy. Yeah. My my squad is Clay, Thompson, um, Dort, Poole, Looney, Boucher, and then picking three power forwards. You want me to go? Yeah. All right. Uh, go with your go with your first one. Go with your starting power forward. Okay, so I think it would be inappropriate for me not to take Draymond Green. Green. <laughs> Draymond Green is my first pick in the power forward draft. <laughs> Let's All go. Right. Just an absolute phenomenal distributor. Can give you a three ball now and again. Take it to the rack. Absolutely posterize somebody, and then get. You can't do it. Guard those the fives. <laughs> Helen is just creating the 2017-18 Warriors. Isn't that the team that Boucher was yeah. on? Oh, yeah, but he never played. Yeah, actually, almost all my players have somewhat of an affiliation with the Warriors. Wow, shocker. It's a winning, yeah, winning organization. Hey, honestly, I went, I scrolled through that PDF of the power forwards so many times, and I mean... There are a lot of bad power forwards, honestly. I just was having a tough time this, deciphering who I'm going to pick. This might be the worst positional group. All right, Shannon, who's your starter? You already know. Robert Covington. Oh, God. Okay. I've got to do some adjusting on the fly. <laughs> Wait, so are we not allowed to both have Lugan Stort now? What do you uh, mean? Should I change it? Did you take him also? Yeah, I, I feel like one of you guys should change it. Okay, I'll. I'll I could find a different guard. I could find a different guard. Yeah, because I freaking love Lou. Ever since I I'll come back on the next pod with a different guard. All right, facts. Yeah, plus, plus I think since Channon has Devin Booker on his team, he can afford. Yeah, facts. Go with it. True, I I can take a lower. I'll take a lower. All right, so in the absence of Pascal Siakam, you know, I think, or or not Pascal, Robert Covington. I don't know. Uh. I don't know why I said Pascal, but I think Grant Williams is ready for a starting position. Damn, really? Jonah's going with pure underdogs. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Grant Williams, he'll slot in nicely next to Pirtle and Gary Trent. He can defend all five positions. We can close games with Hi. him at center, too. It's a good pick. All right, should I go with my back? Damn, bro, your defensive bigs are tough. I'll, I'll go with my backup now. I had to think on the fly because Covington, no, I was going to pick Covington, <laughs> but I've got a good, I, my backup is going to be Juan Toscano Anderson. Okay. Fuck you, Jonah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I, I think he's just going to be an asset off the bench. Just come in and give us some shooting, some athleticism. <laughs> like I really like what he does. And so. Yeah, wow, I mean, bro! You know how long I skimmed through that list and then finally came to the conclusion that I wanted JTA. Oh, All right, All right. That's so funny. You, that's you so funny. Kellen, you did a terrible job. I must admit of reading the room. Like nobody was gonna take Draymond. You could have. You could. <laughs> I didn't think you're gonna take JTA. Didn't you have him like your eighth tier? I would have taken Draymond at my third spot, dude. Like you could have saved him for your last pick and then started him. All right, yeah, so so that's it for mine. I'm, I'm only taking two power forwards because I have Zach Collins. So um, right. now you guys can take your last two players. All right, you want to go first or me, Callum? Give me HB, Harrison Barnes, baby. Let's go. Okay. All right, my second one, I'm going to go with Mo Harkless, actually. I think he's still oh. a, a good defensive player, and I think um, in a better situation. My, my coaching staff will believe in him. What what do you mean a better situation? I feel like Miami. That was I like. Yeah, you know that's what's confusing because you think that would be the ideal situation. Yeah, just for him. Slot into that Jay Crowder role. Um, That, but I I think that I think that Miami has a really particular culture, and I think it works for a lot of players. But I also think some players it just doesn't really work for them. That's fair. I I want to I want to believe like you do because I I 
he seemed just fine in New York last year. And even on the Clippers yeah. when he was playing for the Clippers. So I won't like, and I still like the theory of him as a player. I, to me, it's kind of concerning that the heat just weren't even willing to give him a shot. Yeah. Gave him up for nothing, but yeah, maybe he has something left in the tank. I just need somebody to step in when, uh, Covington's sitting. Yeah, that's that's fair. Like as a yeah, as a backup. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, He's not really probably gonna play much anyway. All no. right, Con, who's your backup? Okay, so I have Harrison Barnes and oh my gosh, I have Harrison Bar. I have Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green, and then I have um, I'm going bully ball down low, Eric Pascal. <laughs> Nice. I'm actually gonna go with some uh veteran old aging offense on my third spot off the power forward bench, and I'm gonna take Rudy Gay. Oh, Rudy Gay, nice. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good pick. Bro, um do you th- how like how realistic is my lineup? I mean, it's actually actually not too bad because uh, all these guys have, have chemistry. They're from the same organization. Yeah, they're going to be really familiar with each other. Exactly. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Clay Thompson and Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green throwback, baby. And guess who I'm going to add when we get the point guards? I actually like Kellen's lineup because I think you can close with um, Draymond as the center. I think – and and – put Boucher on the bench for like the closing lineup. Like I think you maybe start Boucher and Green together, but close with Draymond as the center. I think that could be pretty solid. Yeah. Then Lou Dort can be kind of my tank. You're like Grant Williams esque. And then Jordan Poole provides 20 points a game off the bench. <laughs> Skill. Sick baby. All right. All right. I gotta find a I gotta find a third shooting guard. Get get a Jordan Clarkson. Ah, bro, that's too much offense. I got Booker starting, bro. Wait, let's let's run let's run through the shooting guards really quick. If because would you want to replace them with a similar like type of player, like another defensive player? Yeah, I'm probably looking for more of a defensive prototype. Maybe some shot creation. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Wait, what about defense and shot creation? You might not like this name, but. What about Dylan Brooks? Oh, dude, I, I already have Grayson Allen, bro. I can't yeah, take two Grizzlies players. Yeah. Um, Let me see if I can find the shooting guard list in here. How do you um, search? Josh Akoji, he plays good defense, but literally does nothing else, so... You were crazy girl. I'm about to look at this document really quick. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Holy shit. Maybe you take a flyer on a young player and go with Taylor Horton Tucker. Mm, I'm not the biggest believer in him, but yeah, I but mean, as your pick. as your third guy, that's not a bad pick. Who are you gonna pick? Um, Dante DiVincenzo, maybe. Mm. <laughs> Oh, I if I wish we could have listed this guy as a shooting guard, but I put him at the small forward instead. But Matisse Thibault, I feel like he would be kind of like. Oh, right. that's a good pick. Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to go a really different direction because I have the Grayson Allen energy, and I'm going to plan on giving him some minutes. Can I take Kevin Porter Jr.? Okay, nice, bro. I can I want to play these. I want to play these out. I mean, I'll probably get smacked on 2K, but. Well, would we actually play it or would we just do computer simulation? Yeah, if we actually play played it. if we actually played, Jonah's gonna destroy no matter who's on his team. No, can we turn my sliders up a little bit? I I don't play 2K, do you, Kellen? Uh the last time I played was junior year, 2K19. <laughs> that was kind of nice. I got right, up to so Hall of Fame it. mode and kind of competed. Grayson Allen, Kevin Porter Jr. Yeah, Kevin right. Porter Jr., he's a good, like, high upside pick. Yeah, I like it. All right, boys. So what? what's your team name? Mine's the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what position are we doing next? 
Uh, we only have point SF. guard and small SF. forward. Though. Small forward? Small Save forward. PGs for the end. Okay. I think for the point guard one, we should try to get um, Hayden Azefka on the podcast. So then we have representation for all three of like the main point guards in the NBA. Well, who's he a fan of? The Mavericks. Luke. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. That's dope. You you guys think Luke is probably a point guard, right? I couldn't quite decide, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. I thought AD was a center. I think he'd be better if he was a center, but he only ever wants to play power for. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Sick trick. All right. GG. Small forward next. I already have um my picks. Listed. I have my picks too. Oh, I have my picks. You better believe that right now. Mike's salary cap will be out of this world. Just astronomical. Wait, I wonder if Kellen, are you wait, don't spoil it. It's either gonna be Uber or Wiggins. Who says I can't have both? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely can. You absolutely can. I can. When Chase enters your home arena, bro, you can have as many good players as you want. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys later, boys. Later. Bye. Good job, Jonah. Good job, Shannon. You too.